Hey guys, Drifter here. I have something of a special gameplay for you today. It's a cinematic gameplay on Dome, a lot like the Mirror's Edge montage and the cinematic Moab and stuff like that, but a lot more casual. You'll see me die and get stomped a lot more. This game, I'm kind of schizophrenic. I go back and forth between playing like a complete scrub and playing like a total hard ass using goofy weapons, PM9 and AA-12, that sort of stuff. This was filmed in an open lobby, so everybody you see on my team and potentially some of the people on the other team are all subscribers, because, you know, a few people join in progress. Yeah, there is Irish Royal Gamer. He just got sniped in the face right there. Anyway, I really, really like doing open lobbies and meeting people, meeting you guys, you know, I just kind of like meeting people in general, new people. You, that's how you learn things, is you meet new people, and that's how you build up your life and your relationships is building new people. I'm getting a little bit off track here. And what I meant to say, what I really don't like is the people that join in on the other team in open lobbies whose only goal is to smash me. Or the other night in the live stream, after we get through the first four minutes of Crazy Echo because I forgot to turn off myself watching the live stream. That was very, very stupid. Ooh, watch this. That looked really, really uh, fast, but if you watch in slow motion, I'm able to react just in time to get a headshot and not die because he only needed to shoot me like two, three times that range. Finish him off with a headshot anyway. I had a lot of trolls joining the open lobby. Thankfully, it's not as bad as, you know, the stuff that Woody does where he gets DDoS attacked and things like that. But I had people joining, sending bad messages, always getting on the other team, watching the stream, hunting me down, killing me. It's not very fun, and to be honest, I don't kind of understand that. Like, I don't really understand why that's fun. I sit here and like to think to myself that I'm doing something really cool by having an open lobby and playing with everybody and that nobody would ever want to troll that. But then again, I think that just comes from their, uh, or me having an inflated sense of self-worth. The reality is, I enjoy trolling and making people angry. That's the reason I use these stupid guns for the most part. Even though they're challenging and I enjoy the challenge, a huge component of it is I know that I just piss people off when I kill them with this. I mean, how many of you are really happy when you get hip-fired with a PM9 or hit with a tomahawk? Not a tomahawk, my bad. This game's as a throwing knife or an AA-12 or something like that. And I just get an immense satisfaction out of somebody else's anger and rage and butt hurt, and because of that I guess I can kind of see how trolling the stream and joining in and killing me a whole bunch of times and hearing me bitch about it could also be very fun. See this, this I bitch about a lot, I'm hosing this guy, I'm shooting him like tons and tons of times, you can see the blood coming out of his nuts, albeit my gun is low damage and I'm shooting through a piece of wood over there, but all he has to do is aim his AK-47 with a fucking thermal sight of all things and shoot me like two or three times, I'm gonna fall over dead. Uh, this was a lot worse in game than it was here in slow motion and theater mode it makes a little bit more sense but when you're playing in the game it just felt like all the bullets came at once and I died instantly Another thing I'd like to talk about is I'm kind of having a hard time finding my footing because, as you all know, I stopped the in-depth videos recently because I covered all the topics and some of the uh, things going on with the patch were not very fun. I don't like being trolled on by game devs anyway, but that, well, that's beside the point, and it really burned me out on doing the in-depth, and since then I'm having a hard time figuring out who I am, because if, I, if I'm anything in the YouTube gaming area, I'm the guy that does in-depth videos, which I guess has to compete with Xbox Ahoy's Time to Kill, and tips with T. Martin and several other gun reviewers at also, but I'm the guy that does in-depth and everybody knows that. When I'm not doing in-depth, what is it that this channel or me, what am I known for without in-depth? Like, if you take a, the stripes off a tiger, is it still a tiger? If you change the most critical factor about a person, is that still the person? Like, if, you, if Terry Crews doesn't play football, let's say you take Terry Crews from the Expendables and you make him skinny, who the hell is Terry Crews then? Like, what? What do you do? So I'm kind of experimenting around doing more noob versus pro, more cinematic stuff, more of the longer commentaries, more of the things that I used to do before in-depth completely monopolized the channel as far as views were concerned, and trying to get back to my older self. That's why we're doing more cinematic videos like this. I like doing these videos. I actually think these should be the standard Call of Duty videos because the theater mode is very easy to use in this game. It was a lot easier to use in Black Ops and had really nice dolly cameras. I could do all these really complicated shots and even more complicated shots fairly simply to tell you the truth but nobody really does it it does take some extra work but it doesn't take all that much extra work I made this commentary here and I would say around four ish hours from start to finish which isn't I mean it, it's a bit of work but it, it could be a lot worse a lot of people just like to gameplay commentary upload done I think this makes the commentary way way more fun when you see snipers roundhouse kicking the camera as they die after they're getting hosed down by an AA-12 so I'm just kind of experimenting around trying to find what really sticks, what people really like other than the in-depth because that doesn't restart until Black Ops 2. 
And that's kind of what's going on with me. Also, I'm going back to the live action. I filmed uh, three live action, if it were realistic, videos. The Watch this. I, that missile looks so cool right there. The Nuka-Cola one got blammed pretty hard. People really, really liked the tactical light one, minus the discussions in the comments where everybody is actually a black ops marine military sniper that served in Afghanistan, and they use tactical lights to blind insurgents from 100 yards away. Uh, other than that part... In the comments, the video went over really, really well. And the Juggernaut video actually didn't didn't do quite as good on the live action. I think we had a too slow of a beginning, not enough blood and guts. But I'm going to be filming live action DayZ soon for If It Were Realistic. It's a pretty big script. It's actually going to be a multi-part script. Watch this slowly. I'm actually going to mop up three people with this. There's one dude uh, hiding behind the first one that I kill. And the thing about a DayZ script is you need lots and lots of zombies. So I'm actually looking for volunteer zombies to come out and help film. If you want to meet me, if you want to be in a video on Machinima and on Machinima Respawn, you should probably come and do this and be a zombie. Now, that being said, there are requirements for being a zombie. You need to live in the state of Mississippi because that's where we're filming it. In and around the Mississippi state area would be nice. If there are Oxford, you know, uh, Ole Miss students out there, I won't hold that against you. Not it really doesn't matter. Ole Miss is a good school. Ole Miss and MSU just do different things. Uh, or in Greenwood or Carrollton, Mississippi, or in Newport or Winona. We're going to be filming in a little place called Carrollton, Mississippi. So if you're with any sort of reasonable traveling distance of there, I encourage you to come out and be a zombie because we need a really big zombie horde, and zombie hordes are kind of hard to manage. But there are also requirements. You need to be 18 years of older. We can't have anybody under the age of 18 due to the state's child labor laws. And more so than breaking the law, I really don't like dealing with parents at all. I've had to deal with a little bit of this at, at a few fan meetups and things. Parents are like, yeah, I'm going to go meet this guy I met on the internet out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Mom, can you give me a ride? I'm just going to be here all day. Everything's going to be fine. Doesn't go over well. Any ever always don't want parents standing around. Don't want people that don't have their own cars that need transportation and things like that. It makes my life very, very difficult when I have mothers breathing down my nose. But if you're over 18 and can reasonably travel to MSU or Carrollton, you're more than welcome to come out and be a zombie with me. Also, that kind of leads me into the next topic of nerd culture is kind of booming right now. It wasn't always this way. Stuff like Star Trek was never going to be the number one movie. Star Wars wasn't that cool. Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad, all these kind of shows would generally have been considered nerdy a while back, non-mainstream, not very cool, but it's really bouncing back. Even video games. Video games used to be considered like the ultimate nerd thing, and now they're so mainstream, they're dominating the movie industry. Uh, companies have kind of figured that nerds have a lot of money, and they like to spend their money, and they have particular taste, which you can appeal to, in, you know, fairly easily, and... The, the What got me thinking about this was I saw a comment on the live stream because my wife was coming in and out of the live stream uh, and Ozzy was also coming in and out. But it wasn't about Ozzy. It was about my wife and she actually got quite a few compliments for making the live stream more interesting and uh, quite a few compliments about her boobs and you know being hot and things like that. And one of the comments I saw in the video, video it said, I think I'm trying to quote it, it was like, Jesus Christ, why do all these hot girls go for fucking nerdy guys? And I don't know if that's an insult to me or a compliment to her. I'll take Take it as both. And I just kind of wanted to address that and say that really hot girls don't just go for nerdy guys. They don't see a guy with a TI-83 calculator and be like, Oh my god, I bet he can do differential equations. <gasps> no, just doesn't really happen like that. What happens more often than not is that people with similar interests line up very well. And what you're finding these days is that women have a much broader interest than they used to in the past past, both uh, because our society is changing a little bit, and because, like I said, nerd uh, culture is becoming more prevalent, you get more bleeding over, and obviously, in the short run, looks are very, very important. That's how you meet people. You're probably not going to talk to people that you don't find attractive, so there is that... Um barrier there, you know, uh, a 2 isn't going to go out with a 10 very often, but people that are in similar areas of attractiveness, or it may be attracted to different things anyway, they'll meet up, and if they have similar interests, or if they just really like your personality, they'll go out with you. So, don't be under the misconception that really, really hot girls are just out looking for nerds. You can go to any club dressed like a complete total nerd with your uh, Collector's Edition Star Wars shirt, and see that that is just absolutely not the case. Now, uh, you're going to get to see the final kill cam here at the end of the video where my subscriber sends somebody into uh, second chance, not second chance, dead man's nuke, and then blows me right the hell up. I hope you enjoyed the commentary, and I got a lot of assists this game.
Here at the end of the video, I have a little bit of a bonus for you. I read all the comments and all the videos, and some of the comments that I see most frequently are, cut your hair, your hair sucks, you need to cut it. I kind of like long hair, but it's getting out of control such that I can't see, and I look like a fucking mad scientist from the 1940s. So the next time you see me, the hair will be cut, and I'll be looking much sexier. Also, the giveaway from the last video, the Gamma Lab shirt, is now finally... Uh, finished here. Uh, Adrian won it, or EGM Predator, and he asked me to sign it as such. It was signed, ironed, so it won't bleed. Ozzy got to paw stamp it, and that's kind of his signature. It took me a little while to make it to get the material such that the uh, signature and stuff won't wash out, and whenever I quit being incredibly lazy, it will be mailed out during the post office. The next giveaway on this channel, which I don't really like these huge, crazy, like, giving out PlayStations and headsets and stuff, uh, smaller, you know, memorabilia-style items are much more fun. I think I'm going to give out the Black Ops 2 poster that you get at GameStop, the one that comes when you pre-ordered the game, except I'm going to sign it and put some yin-yangs on it, maybe get Ozzy's... Uh, feet all dirty and let him walk all over it and paw stamp it and mail it out to somebody. That'll go out probably in a week or so, a little bit closer to Black Ops launch. And uh, that's kind of the end of this video. Drifter out.